welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Sarah Palmira and I love chatting about skincare, makeup, and all things beauty. Today, I decided that I was going to give you all, in the wake of some pretty controversial sunscreen headlines, think Gwyneth Paltrow's skincare routine on Harper's Bazaar, that I would give you a comprehensive breakdown on sunscreen. I wanna give you all the tools and everything that you need to know, really a no BS sunscreen guide on how to apply sunscreen, how to choose the best sunscreen for your skin type, and how to reapply sunscreen because I know it can be challenging, it can be confusing, there's just so much info out there. So before we get into the video, I want to thank Skin Store. If you don't know, I am a big fan of Skin Store and I actually have my own discount code with them and they sent me all of the following products. So big thank you to them. All of these products will be available on Skin Store. They will be linked in my bio and you can use my code for 25% off, which is a pretty good deal. This video, other than that, is not sponsored. I'm not being paid to make it. I just really want to talk about sunscreen, especially for this month, which is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. My makeup today is also completely sunscreen based other than one glowy self-tanning primer. So we are going to learn exactly how to achieve this very effortless glowy look. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So one question I get asked often is how do I choose between a physical or chemical sunscreen? There's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet. And so I'm here to basically just clear up some misconceptions and of course to provide references to the studies that I am mentioning. First, I'm gonna go in and show you the DHC Brightening Sunscreen. This is SPF 30 and it retails for $28. And it is a combination of physical filters, including zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Now this sunscreen is not water resistant, but it's really, really nice under makeup as it's very lightweight. Now here are some pros of choosing a mineral-based sunscreen. If you are sensitive or acne prone, most physical filters should be less irritating than chemical ones. Chances are they're not gonna irritate your skin or cause any kind of clogging issues. So that is really, really nice. That being said, there are some definite cons, which includes the white cast. It is very, very difficult to formulate a physical sunscreen that contains no white cast. It's basically impossible unless you kind of add a tint to it. Even nano zinc oxide sunscreens usually have a white cast if you're applying the right amount, which should be two to three finger lengths, depending on the size of your face. So that's what I've done here. One thing that I really do like about mineral sunscreens is that they do not tend to sting the eye area. And it's important to apply the sunscreen all over around your eye area, super important. Also don't forget your ears and your neck, that is key. Now what I like about the DHC sunscreen is that it's actually quite lightweight. Most physical or mineral sunscreens do feel heavier on the skin, which is why if you are oily, you may prefer a chemical sunscreen. Now one thing that gets people very worked up is two factors when considering mineral versus chemical, and that is is it reef safe? Am I damaging the environment? And is it going to enter my bloodstream and cause hormone disruption? Cherry picking is when you take some articles and ignore data from others to prove your point. And it can be a very dangerous and misleading tactic. My complaint with the coral reef theory is that most coral reef destruction happens from overfishing, agricultural pollution, or coastal development. It is not due to sunscreen. And if it is due to sunscreen, it's in a very, very small amount. Now, the studies that mentioned sunscreens potentially harming coral reefs were not made under the best testing conditions. They weren't accurately able to replicate how big the ocean is. And so we can't really take those numbers and apply them to the massive ocean in relation to people wearing sunscreen. It's also very fascinating to me that there are studies that suggest that zinc oxide could cause coral bleaching, but those studies are never talked about. So don't assume that physical sunscreens are reef safe and chemical sunscreens are not. This is a full sunscreen issue and it's nuanced and it's going to take time to assess. Either way, do what makes you feel the best. I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I am here to myth bust a little bit so that you don't feel overwhelmed when choosing a sunscreen. Now let's talk about hormone disruption as it relates to chemical sunscreens. The main filter that people are concerned about is oxybenzone. This is one filter 
and not all chemical sunscreens contain oxybenzone. But the studies were done on rats that were given a very high amount of oxybenzone, and scientists noticed that they had some estrogen increases, and this can cause cancer. However, if we were to replicate that study on human beings, we actually would have to use a very high amount of sunscreen all over our bodies for 277 years. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not planning on living that long. So things like that make me feel better because it really is the dose that makes the poison. Just because in rats, high amounts of oxybenzone cause hormone disruption doesn't mean that in us humans, it would cause the same thing. So far, both the EU and the FDA have found chemical sunscreens and oxybenzone to be considered safe. Now, chemical sunscreens and physical sunscreens enter our bloodstream. But just because something enters your bloodstream doesn't mean that it is bad for you or harming it. So with that, I recommend that you check out some resources and really think about where you're reading your information and who is giving you your information. Is it a company that is trying to sell you their physical sunscreen? If so, there's likely some inherent bias in the information that they're citing. Either way, the choice is yours and I'm giving you information so that you can walk away with it and choose whichever sunscreen is best for you. With that, let's move on to chemical sunscreens. Now my pick for chemical sunscreens was the Clinician's Complex Total Sun Protection SPF 30. I think that this sunscreen is such a steal and no one has talked about it and I think it's super underrated. I love that this is oil free and it's formulated with micronized zinc oxide which helps lessen white cast as well as a few chemical filters as well. This actually has a cooling sensation upon application which I absolutely love. Now, again, if you are sensitive or acne prone, then you have to tread lightly when it comes to chemical filters because some of them can be irritating. However, this is pretty personal because I personally have very sensitive dermatitis prone skin and I find that my skin prefers chemical filters to physical ones. I also really like that I can spread this evenly. There's no white cast. It absorbs so easily. It leaves my skin feeling hydrated. There's no pilling. That being said, one con of chemical sunscreens is that they can sting the eye area, so you have to tread lightly here and apply very carefully. I have found that this does not sting my eyes if I apply it carefully around that area. It leaves me with a beautiful glow, and for $31, you really can't go wrong with this one. Another complaint I hear often is sunscreen messing with the ability to tan, and I totally hear you, but let me tell you, while tan skin is beautiful, so is youthful looking skin that doesn't have any hyperpigmentation, and that is what you are getting if you are wearing wearing your sunscreen. So there are so many easy options for self tanning. One that you've heard me talk about a lot is the Beauty Blur by Vita Liberata. This is just a gorgeous, glowy self tanning primer. It adds such a beautiful sheen. You can wear it instead of makeup, underneath makeup, mixed into makeup. And I also like applying it mixed in to a physical sunscreen if I find that the white cast is too strong. Now, the way that you want to do this to make sure that you don't dilute the protection factor of the physical sunscreen is you apply your two to three finger length amount, and then you add a little bit of Vita Liberata on top, and it just gives such a beautiful glow. But this is one of my favorite products for faking that oh my goodness, have you been on vacation tan? And it seriously works. It comes in a few different shades. And I just think I would so much rather use something like this than risk getting skin cancer or hyperpigmentation. For the body, my absolute favorite has been the Bioderma Photoderm Auto Bronzant. I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but this is so incredible if you are not good at self tanning. First of all, it smells amazing. It has some kind of scent to it that is not a self tanner scent. This is a very gradual self tanner, which means that you can apply it every single day until you get the tan that you like, and then you can just apply it a couple times a week to maintain. What I love about this is that it's super gradual. There's no streaks upon application. It has a really fine mist so that you can just apply it. You don't even really need to rub it in. And there is no transfer on this one. I love that I don't find myself tanner on my sheets or on my clothes. So this is amazing if you are not so good at applying self tanner and you don't want to take time to apply self tanner. I love a good Saint Tropez, but it does take time to really look at everything and see that the colors on evenly. And some of us don't have time for that. So I absolutely love this. I really, really enjoy the glow that it gives and the tan is very, very natural looking. I'll insert a picture here. This is of me after I applied it every single day for a week and a half. Another tip I wanna give you that not a lot of people talk about is sunscreen on the lips. The lips are the most vulnerable spot when it comes to skin cancer and we don't want our sunscreen on 
our lips, it tastes icky, so we just forget about them. And that is a mistake, and getting a sunscreen in a lip balm is so easy. It prevents against chafing and wind and those little fine lines that pop up around your lips will not pop up as soon if you protect them. And this is so easy, you just throw it in a bag. It's SPF 30. I really like this one by Men's Science. It gives my lips a really plump look as well. You just can't go wrong. Do not forget the lips, trust me. Now for reapplication. A question I get asked a lot is, how do I reapply my sunscreen without messing up my makeup and keeping it simple? And yes, this is an annoying facet of sunscreen. Now, if you are inside, chances are you don't really have to reapply your sunscreen, but if you're outdoors, if you're in your car, you're running errands, or you're at the beach, you really do need to be applying your sunscreen every two hours. Now, a few products that I absolutely love that I think are very foolproof are the Color Science Sun Forgettable. This is a sunscreen sports stick, SPF 50. This is a mineral formula and it's so easy. It just glides on the skin. And I find that for a mineral sunscreen, very minimal white cast comes off of this. Once you apply it, there is a little bit of a white tint, but then if you pat it in with your fingers, that warmth will really help it sink into the skin. It gives a beautiful glow, but it's not greasy, which is perfect. And I find that you can apply this over makeup and it does not disturb your makeup. So I really, really like that. You can also opt for sunscreen powders, but the con about powders is it's harder to apply the right amount. Whereas with a stick, it's a little bit easier to get the right amount that you want and make sure that you're evenly covered. You can just pop this in your bag and you can reapply it anywhere, your neck, your hands, your decollete, your eye area. It's great around the eye area because it doesn't sting. So if you find that most sunscreens, whether they're chemical or physical, sting your eyes, get a sunscreen stick and apply it around that area because it won't run and it won't transfer and go into your eyes. So this is amazing if you have very, very sensitive eyes as well. Now for a little bit of makeup fun, if you are an overachiever, you want to make sure you're evenly applied or you just want a gorgeous summer glow these are amazing for the summer these are the color science sun forgettable total protection color bombs and color bronzer so the color bronzer is an absolutely gorgeous glowy bronzer you can just apply this to wherever you would normally contour I like to just dot it on and then press it in with the warmth of my fingers. But if that's not your vibe, you can also use a beauty blender. And then they also have their color bombs. These are different blushes. I have one in the shade Berry and one in the shade Blush. Again, I just tap it on and blend it out with my fingers. These can also be worn on the lips, which is beautiful. And I just adore these. I think they're so easy. They're so convenient. Again, these are things that you can stick in your bag. So if you do feel like after you've reapplied your sunscreen your makeup is wearing off these are SPF 50 and you can reapply your makeup and your sunscreen in just one easy step so I highly highly recommend them and this is the finished look my skin looks glowy but does not feel greasy and I just love how it turned out I look glowy radiant fresh bronzed what more could you want and I'm completely protected from the Sun okay everybody I hope that this was helpful if you have any questions please leave them down below and if I don't have an answer for you I will link you to a resource or an article that does thank you so much again to skin store for partnering with me on this video i hope that this really helped break down any kind of sunscreen issues or myths or confusion that you're having it does not have to be difficult you can definitely make it easy let me know if you like these no bs guides i would be happy to make more in the future about any topic that you would like to hear me speak on. And all of these products will be 25% off with my skin store code, Sarah P25. I will pop it here and all the links to all of these products will be in my description box below. And my code just for reference can be used on most of skin stores merchandise for a nice hefty 25% discount. You will not be getting that ever on Sephora. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing and hitting that thumbs up button so that I know that this was popular. I am wishing you a wonderful rest of your week and I shall see you in my next video very very soon. Bye!